Hey lovelies! Okay, so I'm about to make homemade shepherd's pie. My boyfriend loves it, my friends have loved it, and I thought maybe if I shared the recipe with you, you could learn to love it as well. Here's a couple of the ingredients that you're gonna need. We start off with some nice white potatoes right there. Starchy, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of potatoes you use. I'll show you how to cook them in just a moment. I use basil. I like to use the light version. I always have. Then we need some Campbell's chicken broth. Instead of using milk, we're actually going to use chicken broth. And then one of my secret ingredients that you're about to find out, shh, don't tell anyone. It's herb and garlic cream cheese by Philadelphia. That's my secret ingredient to my mashed potatoes. You're also going to need a quarter of a giant red onion. Make it a big, big one. Cut it in a quarter. Red onions are really great. They last a very long time in the fridge once they've been cut. So don't worry about only, having, only using a quarter and then putting some in the fridge. Also, I mix two separate meats always. And don't worry about whether it's on sale or not. Um, I usually, if it's on sale, I'll just freeze it and then use it when I need to. So I like to use extra lean ground turkey. It's a prime product. It's actually already seasoned with um, a little bit of rosemary extract. And then I like to use uh, lean ground pork. I find that pork has a really great flavor. So if you mix them together, they turn out really, really nice because the, the turkey's nice and lean. The lean ground pork isn't so bad for you. And then of course, what would any of my cooking be without my hot sauce? A couple of the spices that I use are, I love this California garlic and sea salt. I use it on so many things. Also, I'm not sure about you, but my boyfriend loves cracked pepper. So I put cracked pepper in almost everything we cook and he absolutely loves it. Now, a couple other spices that I use are chili powder, garlic salt, and of course, onion salt. What I really love about these shakers is that, so they have this, you can shake out your ingredients. They have this part where you can pour it out right in there. And then this little dial here opens up the bottom right there. Can you see it? It opens up the bottom and that is exactly one teaspoon. So it's a really, really good little spice rack thing that I have going on here. So those are the ingredients that we're gonna use. And now we're gonna get started. So we're gonna dice the onion. I don't generally use a large knife, which my boyfriend laughs at me all the time for, and I don't really care. Um, I'm just not comfortable using a large knife to cut things. So I generally will use a steak knife. Make a couple of slices in like this. I saw Mario Batelli do this once, and I thought it was a genius way. So you see the lines there, and now what you do is you just cut cut in just like that and look at that it's all nice and diced so you'll dice those up nice and small and you will throw them into the browning turkey
-hmm. Okay, so cutting the potatoes, I cut my potatoes a certain way. Everyone cuts theirs differently. When I'm doing mashed potatoes especially, I like to cut my potatoes into as small a chunk as possible. So I almost cut them as if I'm cutting them into the roasting style. Then I'll do this. I'll cut that one in half. So here's the good thing about making mashed potatoes or about making shepherd's pie. It doesn't matter how many potatoes you cut because if you have extra, well then you've got extra mashed potatoes for another day. Mashed potatoes are really great because they freeze really well. I find that potato potatoes don't really freeze very well, but mashed potatoes have a tendency to freeze very well. Add a little bit of salt to them before you freeze them and there you go. So now that you've got your potatoes all cut up, you're going to want to put them on the stove, obviously, because they can't cook by themselves. Hello. So you put your potatoes on. I usually put mine just a little bit above uh, medium. I'm going to season the water just a little tiny bit. With just a little bit of cracked salt, rock salt, cracked salt, whatever you want to call it. Now, don't forget that when you're making your potatoes to stir your meat, because you're going to have it on low, it's already cooked, it's already browned to perfection, we just need to wait for the potatoes. And the oven is preheated. Pow! Just like that. A couple of things you're going to need to mash your potatoes. I have a really, really, really fancy um, mashed potato masher here. It's from Zwilling. I got it on sale at the Bay on clearance for cheap, 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 cheap. I did not pay full price for it because I think it was somewhere around like $30 or $40. Also, a really good mixer. I love my Cuisinart hand mixer. It really works. And I love the fact that it comes in a bunch of different colors. That makes me very happy. I wish I'd have got the blue though. Hmm. And then, last but not least, you are definitely going to need a large mixing bowl. You're gonna rinse your potatoes in here, ta-da! Put them in there, ta-da! And mix. Okay, so checking to make sure your potatoes are done is the easiest thing on the planet. If you don't know how to do this, you should wear a helmet before you leave the house. I'm just saying. Take a potato, take a, take a potato. Take a potato and stick it in the fork. Take your fork and put it into the potato. If it goes in ever so slightly, it's done. It's that simple. So obviously, you're gonna turn off your, uh, your stove right there. You don't wanna burn the place down like I've been prone to almost doing. Shh, don't tell anyone. You're gonna strain your potatoes, like so, in case you don't know how to strain potatoes. quick rinse. That's what I like to do. So we've rinsed our potatoes. Now we're going to put them into our large mixing bowl. It's pretty simple. Now depending on your preference with when it comes to the butter or anything like that, that's completely up to you. You can use as much or as little as you like. I tend to not use too much because I'm also going to add the Philadelphia cream cheese. So I don't want to add too much to my potatoes. So sometimes that, sometimes a little more, just depends. And then the hard work. So a little sprinkling of chili powder, not too much, some 
onion salt because we've just put some garlic in there, so I like to put a little onion salt. And now, my chicken broth. Just a little tiny bit, not too much. When you're mixing, it's very important to make sure you're getting all of it. So I like to stop periodically, push everything down to the bottom of the bowl, and start again. Your potatoes should have a nice, light, fluffy sort of consistency. Make sure to like roll them around, get them in there, and then I like to put mine down just a little bit more. And then one last little uh, punch with the hand mixer. Mmm, perfection. Now here comes the fun part putting it all together. Don't forget your bag of frozen vegetables. Now, my boyfriend doesn't like peas for some reason. He, he hates the consistency of them. So I tend to buy uh, corn and and long greens, cut green beans, and he tends to like that. So what we do first is, we're gonna give this one last little mix, and we're gonna take the whole thing and put it on the bottom. Just like that. Flatten it out. There we go. We're gonna leave that because we're gonna need it soon. Now, put your corn in. Make sure to get it evenly distributed. You don't want just a bunch of corn in one spot because, well, that's not gonna be good. All right, and there you have it. There's the mashed potatoes. And what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to put a lid on it and we're going to stick it in the fridge for about a half hour to 45 minutes and let it cool. I find that when you let it cool and it coagulates together, it, sort, it actually ends up staying together better when it's cooked uh, later on. So that's uh, shepherd's pie with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll definitely make sure to take a little video of it when it's ready and hopefully if you decide to make the same recipe, let me know and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye, lovelies.